The FBI released this video before President Trump announced an end to the government shutdown, but it's another example of the pressure that was weighing on the Trump administration and Congress to come up with a solution. The 2020 Democratic presidential nomination race is about to get even more interesting. There are several reports this evening that Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders will run and that an announcement is imminent. As it stands, right now there are nine Democrats who have already formed exploratory committees allowing them to raise money and pay for campaign expenses. This includes Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and New York Senator Kirsten, Kristen Gillibrand. California Senator Kamala Harris has already uh, hired several campaign staff who worked in 2016 for Hillary Clinton. In addition to Bernie Sanders, here are the others that seem to be preparing to get in. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, former Vice President Joe Biden, former Texas House member Beto O'Rourke, and former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. So what does it all mean? Let's take a closer look in Spotlight. And we're pleased to welcome Jimmy Dore, political commentator and host of the Jimmy Dore Show. He's also the co-host of Aggressive Progressives on the Young Turks. Jimmy, first of all, I have to apologize that you had to follow Christopher Ray talking about how mad he was in such a boring fashion. Uh, but putting that aside, what do you make of the news that Bernie Sanders looks like he's getting in? Boy, I was really afraid when Christopher Ray was expressing how angry he was. I didn't know how how on earth was he able to contain that rage. It was amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. What was your question? I, Bernie still... Sanders. Sounds like Bernie Sanders is getting in the race and the announcement okay. is imminent. What do, what do you make of it? So um, I'm glad Bernie Sanders is getting in. You know, a lot of people are upset that the Democrats, even though their name has Democrat right in it, they don't really run a Democratic process in their primary. They have a thing called superdelegates. And so a superdelegates vote counts for like 10,000 regular votes in a primary. So that's how they rig the system, because they don't actually want the people who vote to choose their uh, candidate. Uh, so they have these things called superdelegates. Now, that's how they, uh, that, that helped them to cheat Bernie Sanders. And so they uh, had this big unity committee and uh, the they came up with this idea to get rid of superdelegate voting on the first round, on the first ballot. And uh, so only they're going to only vote on the second ballot. So now we have three progressives in the race. We'll have Bernie Sanders, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, and Elizabeth Warren. So if they split the vote, the progressive vote, we'll have to go to a second round. And then the superdelegates will get to choose a corporatist like Kamala Harris or Cory <laughs> Booker. And so that's, that's, that's been my theory since the beginning, since I heard that they were getting rid of superdelegates on the first ballot. So uh, I, I figured that they would put in enough progressives to split the vote so then the superdelegates can, can pick on the second ballot. And I, I, I bet that's what's going to happen. You've been an outspoken uh, critic of what you've called the, uh, the corporate media, including the media that <laughs> most people associate with the Democrats, MSNBC. Explain what the problem is with MSNBC. Well, there's a lot of problems with MSNBC. For instance, um, the only person who told the truth about the Iraq war was Phil Donahue and Jesse Ventura, and they both got fired from MSNBC. So if you tell the truth about war, and we're in 8, 9, we're trying to start a 10th right now, and you tell the truth about it, MSNBC will either fire you or smear you or not allow their hosts to cover you, right? So Ed Schultz uh, revealed that he had to leave MSNBC because he wanted to cover Bernie Sanders in the primary, and he was told by the head of the network, you're not allowed to, and he was gone. So all the people who are at MSNBC went along with that directive. So just keep that in mind. And all the people who are at MSNBC have no problem pushing war, because that's what they do. And if you go against it, you'll get fired. So when people look at MSNBC, they think they're getting a lefty perspective. And what they're really getting is a corporatist perspective, because Comcast owns them. And before that, they were owned by General Electric, which is a huge defense contractor. And let's not forget Brian Williams is on their show. I mean, there is just no, there's no bottom to corporate media, right? And uh, it's just, if you look at MSNBC, it's one long conspiracy theory now going on two years. Uh, even even people at The Intercept are noticing and writing articles about it. So uh, that's the big problem with with the corporate media is that it's that it's corporate media and you don't get the truth. And it's why a guy like me, you know, I just I refer to myself as a dumb nightclub C student comedian and I have a very popular show. Why? Because I don't have to I don't have to serve my corporate donors. I just serve my audience. And that means I can tell the truth about the war and I can tell the truth about the corruption inside the Democratic Party, which you'll never hear on MSNBC. 
Given the way media has changed just in the last four years, have things changed politically as well? In other words, this ability of a establishment candidate like Hillary Clinton, perhaps with help, with help from a mainstream media television organization, is there still that ability, you think, of a uh, establishment candidate being able to bury, whether it's a Bernie Sanders or an Elizabeth Warren or a Tulsi Gabbard? Oh, I think they definitely can. Um, you know, again, there's only six uh, giant corporate me media companies, right? And so they're all, they all are in cahoots. And we, I've read manufacturing consent. So I understand how they manufacture consent in this country. And yes, it definitely, I mean, right now, <laughs> Yes, pe people somehow think that uh, because I want Medicare for all and a living wage, somehow I'm being controlled by Putin, right? So that's what they would tell you over at MSNBC, when it just really, I just want the stuff that the rest of the world has, the rest of the Western democracies, the industrialized world. I just want some of that here in the richest country in the world. And here's, a, here's something you'll never hear on MSNBC. What do you call a system that takes the richest country in the world and renders half of its population poor or low income? I call that a failed system. What do you call a system that takes the richest country in the world and renders 30 million of its people without health care? That's a failed system. 80% of the workers are living paid paycheck to paycheck. We have a failed system. Capitalism is failing worldwide. They're trying to pretend socialism is the problem in Venezuela. What the problem in Venezuela is, we want that oil again, and that's the problem in Venezuela. And that's why Saudi Arabia has been overproducing oil to drive prices down to cause an economic problem in Venezuela. And now we get to have a right-wing coup. By the way, the Democrats are behind it. So Nancy Pelosi, that's just how corrupted the, the corporate Democrats are. They're literally pushing for a right-wing coup coup of a democratically elected president in Venezuela. Why? Because they got oil. <laughs> You've uh, articulated um, the view uh, quite well in terms of foreign policy. There's a great fear that already exists in Congress of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who agrees with you on many of these issues. Is it because you think that, uh, that so many people in Washington now feel threatened by these views, or is it because they simply think, well, this is still something of a minority view, and therefore it's okay to pick on her? I think it's both. I think it does kind of scare them because before they ignored her, and then, of course, you know, it's the old saying, first they ignore you, then they, uh, they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. So they've gone past ignoring her, and they've gone past laughing at her. Now they're fighting her. So uh, we'll see. But the problem is, is that Alexandria Ocasio's court says her biggest fight is not with the Republicans. It's with the conservatives in the Democratic Party. Her own leadership is conservative. Nancy Pelosi actually moved the Democratic uh, Party to the right, the caucus in the House to the right. She didn't move it to the left after Trump. So the reason why we got Trump is because the Democrats moved to the right, so far to the right, that they were in bed with the Koch brothers at the Democratic Leadership Council via Bill Clinton. People have no idea. If people had any idea of what Barack Obama and the Clintons did to the Democratic Party, they would be screaming bloody murder. And the big thing is, right now, people People are going crazy. Liberals go nuts over Donald Trump being president. And the reason was because when, when Barack Obama was president, there was a huge gap in the perception of what the government was doing to what we perceived the government was doing. There was this huge gap. Now with Trump, there's no gap. We right. know exactly. So what the government is doing, we see it immediately and we're horrified. But it's just funny, you know, it's just like when everything Trump has done, you can find a, an instance of the Clintons or Obama doing it. Like, for instance, with the border, right? Say, so oh, my right. God, Barack Obama was the, but he turned out he was the deporter in chief. And he actually put kids in cages at the, at the border. And it turns out he also gassed people, at the, immigrants at the border. And I guess those immigrants should feel great that they were gassed by the lesser of two evils. <laughs> Jimmy Dore, political commentator and host of the Jimmy Dore Show. Jimmy, thanks for being on I-24 News. Great to have you on. Hey, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You got it.